Bob Deckard isn't loyal to his wife or loyal to his country. So why is Stephen Harper being loyal to him? The case for firing Deckard tonight on The Source. Bob Deckard is Canada's parliamentary secretary for foreign affairs. It's like being a junior foreign affairs minister, basically an understudy to the minister, who's John Baird. Being parliamentary secretary is a position of trust. Deckard has a secret security clearance. He sees things that are confidential. He's in a position of responsibility and discretion. He's checked out by the RCMP when people meet with him to lobby him. By law, those meetings have to be publicly disclosed in a registry. In other words, Bob Deckard's kind of a big deal. I mean, he's not the foreign minister, but he's involved in foreign affairs. He's more than an opinion leader. He's part of the decision-making team for the government. Uh, Deckard's a member of the Canada-China Legislative Association. Here he is on a parliamentary website listed as the vice chair of that group. He accompanied the prime minister to uh, China on an official trip. Here's Deckard with Mr. Harper and Mrs. Harper. And here's another picture of the core team in China. Look at uh, Deckard himself. He's third from the right. In other words, Deckard is a China policy decision maker. He's not just a backbench MP. He is involved in confidential matters. And as someone, as sometimes happens with parliamentary secretaries, he may one day be promoted in the future. It's not inconceivable that he could become the foreign minister himself one day, which is why he needs secret security clearance. It's why the RCMP check him out. It's why he takes an oath of loyalty to Canada and our Queen. And it's also precisely why the Chinese dictatorship sees him as such an ideal target. He's not the big boss, but he's a mid-sized boss on the way up. Bob Deckard is exactly who the Chinese Communist Party wants to help them, help them gain information about Canada and our diplomatic and political secrets and even our business secrets. This isn't a spy novel. This is real. Right now, CSIS estimates that China has one thousand agents in Canada working not just to undermine us militarily, but more importantly to steal useful information. CSIS estimates that China steals a billion dollars each month in industrial and, te in and technological secrets from us, which is about as much as they actually buy from us legally, is exactly what CSIS boss Dick Fadden warned us about. Here's Mr. Fadden. We're in fact a bit worried in a couple of uh, provinces that we have an indication that there's some uh, political uh, political figures who have developed quite an attachment to foreign countries. In a few minutes. Fun. CSIS spends literally 50% of its counterintelligence efforts battling against Chinese spying, which is why Bob Deckard's secret affair with a Chinese agent is unacceptable. Here's a picture of Deckard and Xi Rong. She's the Toronto boss of Xinhua, the Chinese news agency. Of course, there is uh, no free press in China, so Xi Rong actually works for the Chinese government, the Chinese dictatorship, the Chinese Communist Party, to be accurate. Xi Jinping was actually set up by the Communist Party as a propaganda arm, but today it's also a de facto spy agency, not just gathering news, but gathering secrets about Canada. Deckert obviously knows that, but he decided to have an affair with Xi Rong, a secret affair. There's a picture of Deckard's wife, Ruth Clark, standing loyally by as he's sworn in as an MP. But Deckard wasn't loyal to her, was he? He professed his love and attraction to Shi Rong, and it was only when Shi Rong's husband found out about their affair by reading her emails and then sent copies of those emails to everyone on Shi Rong's email address list did the world find out about this illicit affair. In other words, Bob Deckard didn't come clean about his disloyalty on his own. CSIS and the RCMP didn't even detect it, even though they gave him security clearance. It was only an angry, cuckolded husband that revealed this disastrous security breach. Deckard admitted the emails were from him. But he said, oh, it's no big deal. He merely said they were flirtatious. Oh, really? Here's a copy of one of these emails. Take a look. You're so beautiful. I really like that picture of you. I, I love it when you do that. In other emails, he says that he loves her. Sorry, telling someone their hair looks nice is flirtatious. Telling someone that you love them, you could hardly wait to see them again. That's not flirtatious. That is an intimate relationship. Here's an image apparently from Shi Rong's Blackberry where Deckard professes his love. Hello, I'm happy that you're safe. I love you too. 
Sorry, that's not flirtatious. Now, whether or not Deckard had a physical relationship is not known to us. Deckard has wisely been hiding from reporters, or at least uh, Canadian reporters. But I'm sure the Chinese government knows. And frankly, if they had physical contact, if they slept together, even if they just had a private date, I'm sure it's all been photographed by the Chinese government, probably videotaped, too. It's called a honey trap. It's the oldest trick in the book. Surely Bob Deckard doesn't think that she wrong was attracted to him for his Benjamin Button good looks, does he? Now, here's Michelle Juno Katsuya, a former senior CSIS intelligence officer who talked to us a couple days about, ago about just how dangerous a position Deckard was in. At this point, I think he has to step down. The, 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 he has a serious brief of confidence and trust uh, within and judgment uh, in his position as we speak. Second, CSIS or the RCMP has to step down and try to debrief him as much as possible to do a damage control. How much information did he share with this woman? What kind of information did she try to obtain from him? And what kind of information was he allowed to sort of pass? Or what kind of messages he carry back to his own caucus? He carry back to uh, his own foreign minister. Exactly right. And that fellow there, that's not a politician. That is a Canadian spy catcher. He's totally right. Here are 10 questions that we just don't know the answers to that I want the answers to. When did this relationship start? Number two, who initiated it? She wrong or Deckard? Three, other than these intimate emails, what else has Deckard sent to She wrong? What are the documents? Question four, have they ever talked about politics? or Canada-China relations, or any industrial matters? Question five, what has Xi Rong asked him about? What did Deckard give her? Question six, what input has Deckard had into Chinese policy in Canada since he met Xi Rong? What has he said or done? Number seven, what has he said in caucus or the parliamentary association? What has he said? Number eight, what did he tell the prime minister or foreign minister uh, about China? And here's the most important ones, number nine, what situations has Deckard been in that are still secret to us, that could still be used to blackmail him even now? And number 10, is he being blackmailed with photos or phone call recordings or videos right now? Now, these questions must be asked of Deckard and not by a spin doctor from the prime minister's office. These are questions to be asked of him at CSIS's headquarters over a full day or two. And Deckard's phone records and email accounts and digital cameras and credit card receipts must all be inspected too. I don't know what else CSIS would check. They would know, that's the point. This isn't a political matter or a media matter. It is a security matter. It's about finding out just what has been compromised and what blackmail opportunities still exist now. We do not need to wait for that damage report before firing Deckard. We should fire him today. He should have been fired when this news came out. We should fire him for being stupid for having such a lack of common sense that he would have an affair with a Chinese government agent. That's not just stupid, it's malicious because he clearly knew it was wrong since he hid it from the government. So he knew he was doing something improper, but he still did it anyways, which makes sense, I guess. I mean, if he was clearly cheating on his wife, obviously he's not going to brag about it. Whether or not the relationship with Xi Rong was physical, he was clearly being intimate with Xi Rong. He was clearly violating his marriage vows. Now, I don't think someone should be fired from office because they cheat on their wife or husband. I think Deckard should be fired for national security reasons. But the fact that he cheats on his wife and is disloyal to her is a bit of a hint about how he'll respect his oath and duty and loyalty to you and me. He hid this from his wife. He hid this from the RCMP. What else is he hiding now? Fire him and then find out. Now, John Baird, the foreign minister, has been dismissive of this whole thing. He calls the whole thing ridiculous. Here's him brushing this off when he was asked about it. Well, uh, listen, I think uh, the government has spoken to this. Uh, Mr. Deckard has spoken to this. Uh, I've spoken to this. I have nothing really uh, additional. Oh, yeah, he's spoken about it. He's spoken about it, saying it's ridiculous. He has not answered those 10 questions that I put a moment ago. It is not ridiculous to ask about the judgment and ethics of Deckard. It's not ridiculous when Dick Fadden of CSIS and former China hands like Charles Burton on our show yesterday and Michelle Juno Katsuya a couple of days ago say this is a serious problem. This is not a political matter. It is a security matter. China, Canada is swarming with Chinese agents, and one of them found a stupid horny MP who was thinking with his little head instead of his big one. He should be fired for his lack of judgment and loyalty and he should be investigated to find out what damage he has done to the country he claims to love. I'm talking about Canada. 
Will John Baird turn a blind eye to Deckert compromising himself and the country? I know what China hopes John Baird will do, but Canadians who care about national security and politicians with character who we can trust must insist that Deckert be fired and then investigated.